high definition ambient occlusion. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a screen space effect, so it's, <coughs> it's not calculated looking at the whole scene, it's calculated looking at the pixels that have been rendered, <coughs> and uh, in particular looking at the colour information, and if you have it, the normal information which tells you where the surface is oriented, and the, the Z information which tells you how far away it is from the camera. <laughs> That gives you the, um, the artificial shadowing that we're calculating from depth information. <coughs> if you look at something like Hawks uh, or Stormrise or um, Battleforge, all of those use the technique. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, Age of Conan is another one that uses it. There are quite a few games that use this um, screen space ambient occlusion trick for calculating lighting detail, which is <coughs> a part of the scene. Mm -hmm. um, but using tricks. Uh, I'm not sure if this option is here. If we switch uh, back to showing the, the buffer. Okay, so we have, a, we have a compute shader path here. The, the obvious kind of transitions are 10.0 does it with pixel shader doing one fetch per mm -hmm. Z value. 10.1 does it with a pixel shader doing four fetches per Z value. Cool. Four times quicker on that part of the shader. Right. 11 uses a compute shader where you bring in parts of the, the Z buffer bring it into the, uh, the local data store, the LDS, on the chip. The compute shader does all of the maths and so on. And you do that fetching in groups of four as well, so you have all of the advantages that you'd like out of a piece and of you can we use tons of data you already have in the yes, data share. Yeah, the data share is, is the killer feature there, <coughs> where we see performance advantages over 10.1 of about three to one in the best case. But you can also use a compute shader in the down level and stuff. You can use it in 4.0 and yeah. 4.1 computer right. yes. so DirectX 10 hardware will support it.